So this video lesson is all about inequalities, and it's the first of first of several about inequalities, dealing specifically with first the definition of inequalities, trying to decide what it is that they are, why we'd be interested in talking about them, when we would use them, and then the basic techniques for solving inequalities um, in their most basic forms. Uh, there are some other concepts which we'll go into in uh, later video lessons, but that's what this one is about. So first, let's take a look at an example of something we might um, come across. For example, if you were baking cookies for a New Year's celebration, you wanted to bring at least 100 cookies with you. Now, of course, the inclusion of the words at least become important because that means you can have more than 100, um, or you could have 100 itself, but you can't have less th than 100 cookies with you in order to you know, satisfy what you decided you wanted to do, which was bring 100 cookies. And so the question is, if you've already baked 40, how many more do you need to make? And so as we've been talking about as we've read this question, one of the primary things is identifying what makes this question different from the ones that you've seen before, and it's at least. It's not you want to bring 100 cookies, you want to bring at least 100 cookies. Um, and so that changes the total possible um, answer set from one specific number, which is 100, to an entire group of numbers, and that's any number over 100. And so when you solve it, sort of intuitively, thinking about it, if you've already baked 40, 40 plus 60 equals 100, so you need to bring at least 60 cookies with you to um, satisfy your want to bring 100 cookies. Now that doesn't mean that you have to have exactly 60. You could bring 70, you could bring 68, you could bake 138 more. Sorry, it should be 70 more, 68 more, 138 more. If you really had the time, we could even, for the sake of just saying this would be true, you could make thousands and millions of cookies. But the point is, it has to be at least 60, so anything 60 and above. On the other hand, baking 12 more won't work because you won't get to that 100. So what we have here, where we're talking about all of the numbers that are either greater than a number or less than a number or greater than or equal to is what's called an inequality. And an inequality is what you get when you take two expressions and you compare them so that one is greater than and perhaps greater than or equal to the other. So you're saying, unlike an equation, where in an equation we have two things that are equal to each other, and in inequality, still involving equal as the base word, except an inequality contains the in at the beginning, which means not. So the inequality just says that one expression is greater than the other. And to talk about inequalities, we have four different signs. We have a less than sign, a greater than, and then these two are really the primary two signs that we use if we want to include a number that could be equal to, or greater than or equal to, we add the equal bar underneath. So one more time, let's go back and, and spend a second reviewing real quick. An inequality is what you get when you have two expressions that are not set equal to each other. They are instead um, set so that one is greater than the other. But we can read them depending on what we do. When we hit these symbols, if we hit the, the symbol equals, the two horizontal lines, we would read x is equal to 12. Well, if we set those same numbers next to these signs, we would read the signs like we read the equal sign except with their names. x is less than 12. x is greater than 12 x is less than or equal to 12, x is greater than or equal to 12. Now it is true that I said that one expression is always greater than the other. They don't necessarily read greater than because the greater expression could be on the right, as in the first example and in the third example. So that's when we read something like less than or less than or equal to. So let's take a second here. We want to look at this inequality and decide what is this really saying? And so when we read this inequality, take a second, you don't have to pause the video, but take a second to see if you can read it based on the signs that uh, we showed on the last frame. This inequality is read x is less than 12. So now I'm going to ask you to pause the video and come up with three examples of numbers that fit this inequality. That is, values for x where x is less than 12. 
and also three examples of values for x that do not fit this inequality, meaning values for x where x is not less than 12. Go ahead and pause the video now and come back when you're done. Well, some simple examples of x's that are less than 12. We have the whole numbers that we know. This side is going to be true. Things like 11, 9, 8. But we also have other things like 0, negative 4, 1 third, 7 tenths, etc. On the other hand, for numbers that are false, would just be any number that's greater than 12. 13, 14, 12.1, 3,172, and also 12. 12 is not less than 12. 12 is equal to 12. So technically, this cannot fit in the inequality. So everything less than 12 is true. Everything that is 12 or greater is false. So using that idea, take one more, take one more set of practice here. Write down three examples for each of these. Um, that three examples that fit, three examples that don't fit, and then unpause the video and we'll keep going. So for x is less than seven, it can be any number, any negative number works, um, because any negative number is less than seven. On the other hand, we also have numbers like six, five, etc. Examples of things that don't work, dnw for do not work, we'll write them in green, 8, 12, 17, 100, etc. And even 7. 7 is not less than 7. 7 is equal to. Going on to the second example, x is greater than negative 5. Any positive number here works, and also any number between negative 5 and 0. So we have things like negative 4, negative 2. 12, 0, 11, and 1, 13. The numbers that don't work are just anything that is less than negative 5, negative 7, negative 8, negative 10, etc. And finally, for x is less than or equal to 0, everything that's true is negative or 0, because 0 is less than or equal to 0. It's equal to itself, and everything that's false does not work is positive. So now let's look at this in the basic example of solving a type of inequality. Well, if we go back to looking at equations, we knew that to solve an equation, we always have to keep the equation in balance. That is what that equal sign represents, that the two are equal to each other. So whatever we manipulated on one side, we have to manipulate the same thing on the other side. Whereas with an inequality, they're not necessarily equal to each other. They could be if we have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, but Really, the scales are out of balance. And so now that the scales are out of balance to start off with, we want to keep them out of balance. Or at least not intentionally put them in balance. Because then we would be sacrificing what we need by the inequality. But the rules are the same as they are for equations. What you do to one side, you must do to the other to maintain a true inequality. So you can add, subtract, multiply, divide, pretty much any number that you want, but you have to do the same thing to the other side, and depending on what you multiply or divide, you may have to look at um, our inequality sign and make some changes there. So let's take a look at this example that we have here. x plus 12 is less than 17. So solving this inequality. Well, if this were an equation, we would look at it and say we want to find a value for x where x plus 12 is equal to 17. Well, we know 5 plus 12 is equal to 17, so I'm going to write this over here because intuitively we know this should be the answer. Now we're going to go about how to prove it and to make sure that we're doing it rigorously and showing all of the work. So just like an equation, we can add, subtract, multiply, divide anything to either side, and our keyword with the variable is isolate. We want that variable to be left alone. So in order to do that, on the right-hand side of the equation, as we are on the left-hand side of the equation, we are going to subtract 12. 
if we subtract 12, I'm sorry for the inequality, if we subtract 12, then x plus 12 minus 12 becomes just x. This is what we want. This variable is isolated because it is on its own side of the inequality sign. Now, on the right-hand side, we have 17 minus 12, which is equal to 5. So whereas x equals 5 will give us 17, we don't want x plus 12 to be equal to 17. We want x plus 12 to be less than 17. So we can take any number that we want as long as it is less than 5, and it satisfies this equation. And there are infinite numbers of possibilities, which is part of the really cool thing about inequalities is we can talk about an entire half of the number line or an, or an entire set of numbers just with one little elegant sign. So go ahead and pause the video and see what you can do with these four inequalities. Now they follow each of the four different operations. Remember that when you solve an equation, you use the inverse operation. If it's, a multi if it's multiplied in the equation, you would divide. And the same thing is true here. So go ahead and see what you can do. Numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. So for number one, we are multiplying by three. So to undo the multiplication, we divide by three. After we divide by three, three divided by three is one. So we are just left with one x. x is less than or equal to 21 divided by three is seven. x is less than or equal to seven. For number two, we have x plus 11 is greater than 15. To get rid of the minus 11, we need to add 11 back. Because if we take a value, to take uh, or take a number of things, take 11 away, and we have 15 left. We find the original number by adding those 11 back. x minus 11 plus 11, the two 11 cancel out, and we're just left with x. x then is greater than 26. For number 3, x, is, x divided by 6 is less than 1 half. Well, x is divided by 6, so in order to undo the divided by 6, we need to multiply by 6 on both sides x divided by 6 multiplied by 6 becomes just x. 1 half times 6 is 3. You can do the decimal multiplication by, uh, on your own to verify that. And finally, for number 4, we're adding 5. So to undo that 5 and isolate the variable, we need to subtract 5 away from both sides. The two 5s cancel out, leaving us just an x. x is greater than or equal to negative 3 minus 5. If we keep change change, as we did with in our lesson on subtracting integers, becomes negative 3 plus a negative 5. And finally, x is greater than or equal to negative 8. So as a quick review, an inequality is naturally out of balance. There is the possibility, and in fact, most of the solutions will happen where the two sides of the inequality are not equal. And sometimes, as in this one, we don't want them to be equal. So as we add, subtract, multiply, divide to each side, and we remember that we have to do the same thing to both sides in order to preserve our balance, or in this case, out of balance, we can do all of the same things that we do with an equation, except now with an inequality. But one of the cool things about inequalities is that even though we've now gone through everything that we talked about with an equation, that's still not quite the end of inequalities. There's a few other things to consider, like, what if x is multiplied by a negative number? Because if you think about it, where 3 is less than 5 in the positive numbers, negative 3 is actually greater than negative 5. And so when the numbers flip from positive to negative, this inequality, in order to make it true, needs to flip too. So what is that going to tell us about what if we have to multiply or divide by a negative number to solve our inequality. Are we concerned by this flip of sign here? Maybe we aren't, maybe we are. And how can we show the values for x visually? So we have a quick visual idea of these are all the possible values for x. With an equation, there is one solution, maybe a few, uh, but we aren't talking about any of those right now. Whereas for an inequality, our solution is an entire half of the number line. It's an entire set of numbers. So how can we look for it visually? But those are questions for another video lesson.